Hi and welcome back to the channel. This is video number three on modifying our Firefly FFMN. Our goal is to spend not more than what we paid for the guitar on modifying it, taking it to the next level to make this guitar a gigable guitar, something that you can take out on the road and the guitar is going to be dependable. It's going to stay in tune. It's going to be road worthy. So what we need to do right now, starting out, we're going to take the guitar, flip it over, and we're going to start working on the claw, picking up exactly where we left off in video number two. Okay, here we are at our claw. We have to remove the ground wire in preparation for our new claw. And I've already lightly sanded this just to kind of scuff it up on this side to uh, put our new ground wire connection right here. First thing we need to do though is to remove the ground wire. Grab the wire here. Take our iron. That quick and painless. Now we want to remove our screws here. I'm going to use the body of the guitar here. Wood's a pretty good insulator. And what I have is some pretty fine solder. It takes a while for it to get hot. There we go. I'm going to take our wire, move our piece over. I'm going to get on a better angle here. Since the wire is coming in on this angle, I'm going to kind of put it like that. And I'm going to hold it. Get it hot again. Good connection. Now we're going to put our brass screws in place. And yes, brass holds heat.
this one in. I'm going to go about right there. I might actually take that one out just a little bit. Because we need some room to be able to get the springs on. And I'm not going to grab that yet and pull it back because it's it's still pretty toasty. So we'll wait five minutes and let that cool. Okay. I have my guitar face up now and I've reinstalled the tremolo blocks and I measured these before I removed them and I have them back approximately in the same place but if you remember we've modified our bridge we've changed the saddles and done a lot of work to it um, so this height is just a general height and we want to be careful not to mess up our cleaned up knife edges Sometimes this can get tricky, especially on the ones that are routed out. Sometimes you're better off to let the bottom fall in and then see if there's clearance like that and then push forward. This one's hanging up just a little bit. There it is. Now I'm going to let the bridge drop just like that. Okay, now I'm going to hold that bridge. I'm going to flip the guitar. Grab the bridge. Now we have to make the determination on the springs. And I've already elected to put some black Floyd Rose springs in. So let's open up this package and get the springs out. Those are the three springs. I'm just going to put one in for right now, just to kind of hold it. And you can see that I don't have the screws in far enough. So I'm going to move the screws just in a little bit. I don't want a lot of tension on it, just enough so we can work. that is stuck between the two ears there it goes get it hooked now bring it back and get it hooked in the tremolo drop it down now I'm gonna put just a little pressure on it Now the pressure's on it, so we should be able to just take the guitar and flip it. And you can see it moved on us just a little bit. That's why I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on it. There it goes. Get it riding in that knife edge. can see it's wanting to kick back on us so we don't have that much pressure on it so I'm going to try to hold the bridge again and flip the guitar I'm going to try to get another spring on it
So on this side we have free movement. On this side it seems to be hanging up just a little bit. So let's check out what's going on. Ah, right there. We can see that it's hitting. So we're going to need to disassemble this and just lightly take that corner out. And I'm just going to kind of scrub about where that mark is. Not right there. We don't need to go back too far, probably. Right there is about all we really need to go. Let's disassemble again. Build the bridge. Flip the guitar. And we're going to back the bridge out. That route is just a little small for this bridge because it hits back here without being able to get it up and out. There we go. Okay, let's flip our guitar over again. So we gotta take that corner out. So I'm going to grab my chisel. And my fret hammer. Move some stuff out of the way here. back in right here and just clean up that corner. Back right here. Remember, a very sharp chisel. Let's get the debris off the workbench. <coughs> Let's flip the guitar over. Put our bridge back in. I can already feel that there's a difference. See, now there's there's clearance. And it's hitting something right there. But that is a lot of downward movement. So we'll flip it over and just see what it is actually hitting. Maybe we need to take a little bit more material. So it's actually hitting the body itself back here. So I think we're good there. I 
Now what I am seeing with the bridge all the way down right here, it looks like this is sticking out past the body. I'm going to have to put a little bit more tension on these springs. Not much. Not right there. Just to keep pressure on. Now let's put our bar on. That's a lot of downward travel. So I'm going to pull the tremolo back make an adjustment on this screw right here. That way we're not in the knife edge. Lock it in place. See, we're almost there. Pull the tremolo back so it's not riding on the knife edge. And then lock it. Needs just a little bit more. We're just guesstimating. It's pretty good. You're never going to be pulling back that far on the bar. And this is the factory plate. If you were wanting to do extreme die bombs like that, the issue here is this lip right there. This edge is rolling forward and pushing the knife edge out here. So this would have to be cut back, chamfered and chamfered. So as you pull down on the bar, it wouldn't affect it. I'll pull it back on the bar. But you would really have to be going crazy up. That's pretty good. Next thing we want to do is put two strings on it. We're going to put our two E strings on. Okay, I got my string pack here. We're going to start putting some strings on. third and sixth
not going to cut them off short because these strings are probably not going to be kept. We have a lot of setup to do. I'm going to leave a little bit on there. I'm just going to put a little pressure on. I'm going to go ahead and put our second spring back on. gauge and our neck was a 12 and let's see in the stock position how close we are definitely going to need what I ended up having to do when I installed these saddles I put the shortest saddles on the end then the medium saddles here and the tallest saddles in the center position and I played with this for about a half an hour and couldn't get the radius quite right so what I ended up doing is I took one of the tall saddles here and I put it in this position. Okay. Then I added a shim here. Added two shims here. And one shim here. And that has gotten our radius now perfect. They're just barely ringing out. Let me get it right there. That one rings out just a little bit. So does that one. Dead, 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 dead. And this one's buzzing pretty bad. This one, I did try to put another shim under it. And it ends up being too tall. And I only have two different size shims, and neither one of those two sizes, when I stack, gets me exactly where I need to be. You can hear that one is ringing out a little bit, but if I apply a little pressure, it's dead. But as soon as I let off, just, I mean, I'm just barely putting pressure, and it's killing it. Every tremolo is going to be a little different. Uh, some people don't even set their tremolo up to match the radius of the neck. Some people like a very flat, you know, set up here, and that gives you a little bit more height here. If you've got maybe, you know, a 10-inch radius or a 9-inch radius, that, that allows a little bit more room when you bend that high E so it doesn't fret out. Uh, on a 12 or a 14, you can set that radius. It's not going to fret out at that point. And uh, what we need to do now is we, we need to intonate. Okay. We still need to intonate the bridge. And we still need to install our pure tone jack. So what I want to do right now is I actually want to install the jack and then I'll hop back over to intonating the bridge. I just need a little bit of a break from it um, after moving the saddles around and shimming and recalculating and shimming. 
sometimes it's better to step away from it, work on something else, and then come back to it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to move the camera so you can get a better view of installing this Pure Tone jack. Okay, here's our factory jack. So we're going to unscrew that. And double check before you pull and make sure that you have enough wire. So I'm looking here. I'm looking here. And these two wires are the ones. So there's plenty of extra wire. I'm pull that over like that. I'm going to get my iron. First thing I'm going to do is clean it. Just like that. Now on our pure tone jack, if you look, this one right here is ground. It goes over and grounds to this collet. This one is sandwiched between the two boards. That's our hot. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper. I just want to scuff up just like that and then I want to tin those Try to position that to where I can, you know, just like that. And I believe I've showed this before, what we're using. And the soldering iron I'm using is a Weber W100P. I used to go through soldering irons and this Weber is just the one if you're not used to soldering though it gets really hot really quick I believe it's a 100 watt which some are going to say is way too hot alright we have it tinned And again, I want to double check my orientation. Ground hot. Just going to move this up. Get this in a position where it'll stay and I can make a good joint. This is holding that from moving. I'm going to take a pair of pliers. This is actually difficult to do with the camera right in my way. So I'm trying to do this and the, the camera's literally right in my way. Okay, double check, make sure you got it on the right one. I'm going to 
put just a little bit more solder on my arm. May need to clean it again. That's all there is to it. Now I have misplaced the factory jack because we need the furl. So give me one second while we locate the factory jack. Okay, I just took this, spun it around, got it loose enough to remove our old one. Let me take a seat here. And there is two knots on the pure tone one. What I like to do is to get the lower nut up to where when you install this, it's not sticking way out. So I'm gonna bring it about right there. Double check it. And something else we need to do, grab it here. Yep, camera's in the way. We have some blue Loctite. I'm going to put some blue Loctite. Wow. That's not a little, that's a lot. But it is what it is. We're going to take some blue Loctite. So this thing does not come apart. Put some blue Loctite on your threads. Work your nut up into that Loctite. Bring it back. You want to get it in the threads. Just a little bit more. Just like that. piece on I don't think we have room I think we should probably do the washer on the back we'll see I think I need to move this nut back just a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to get it close there and then I'm going to pull the rear nut forward.
You can give it a pretty good turn. <clears throat> you will never have a problem with this coming undone. With that blue Loctite on there, it'll stay uh, good and snug. So let's uh, push this back down into the guitar. Let's fish some of that wire through the hole. There we go. And let's reinstall our screws. Now, I've said this a million times. I keep parts. Someone may come into your shop that just needs a real quick fix that's got a, you know, a very cheap guitar. And the parents just want it, to, you know, to work. And this is a good replacement jack for those scenarios. It's essentially new. Is it a quality jack? Yeah. It's not horrible if you look at the factory jack. It's not it's not like that is so thin that it's it's not a horrible jack. I've seen worse. So it's good enough to keep for, you know, a quick repair on a budget. Okay. I guess since uh I took a little break from the tremolo and that didn't take too long. Now we need to intonate the bridge. So let me reorient the camera and we'll do a quick uh, intonation on this. And uh, actually, before we intonate, we do have something else to do. I use the shallower locking keys, you know, on my straps. So let's put these on real quick. That was a uh, Another thing that we wanted to do to the guitar. And we are keeping track of every part that we use. That way we can get a total on what we have spent. So here's our factory. I'm going to check it with a number two JIS. Feels pretty good. Sometimes you got to give it a little pop, a little plastic furl. And again, I'll keep this part. Probably have 50,000 of those, but you never know. That's a pretty decent fit. Again, here's why I keep parts. They didn't give us any little fuzzy pads, but I have fuzzy pads from other instruments. So we're gonna steal two fuzzy pads because they were kept from another repair. Now we don't have to spend a dollar on two little fuzzy pads. Those dollars add up. Don't over tighten. There we 
we go. Now let's move some stuff around here. Get to the front of the guitar. And we'll do the exact same thing. Alrighty, that's pretty much all we can do. Now let's intonate it. <clears throat> okay, here we are at our bench. We've got our straight edge with our blue tape completely encapsulated in the blue tape. We have our 2.5 for our bridge pick and our Peterson strobe tuner and we guesstimated when I set these saddles so let's uh, see how close my my guesses were so let's start on our E Let's check our 12th. I think we're a little sharp. Hard. Soft. Yep, we're definitely sharp. I'm going to take a little tension off the string. Take our 2.5 and let's adjust our saddle. Tune. That doesn't look too bad. All right, let's start varying our pressure. Hard. Soft. Let's move our finger around. Let's tune it just a little bit. Check again. I'd say that's good. Let's go to our A. Trying 
trying to get it as close as we possibly can in tune. I'm going to start varying the pressure. It's pretty close. Hard. Soft. This dead center fret. A little bit forward. Alright. A is good. Look at our D. Try our twelfth. Did we get two in a row right? All right, let's start varying the pressure. That's hard, soft. Hard, center fret, I'm going to say that needs to move ever so slightly forward, so we're going to loosen it a little bit. Tune. Twelfth. Okay, that one's good. Check our twelfth. That one's close. Let's start varying the pressure a little bit. Move our finger. Make sure our open is as close as we can get it. Okay. 
Okay, let's check again. I'm going to say the G is good. Let's check our B. Let's check our 12th. That one's definitely sharp. Let's take some tension off. Check our 12th. I think we're still sharp a little bit. Wolf. Let's give it a little tune. Let's vary the pressure. Mm. 
I'd say that one's pretty good. High E. I'm going to say that one's high. Let's adjust our saddle. Take a little bit more tension off. more tension. There we go. Let's retune. I think we went a little too far. Another adjustment. Check our twelfth. That's pretty good. Now, every time you make an adjustment, it affects things. So, we've been adjusting our saddles, adding shims, doing, a, you know, setting the intonation. So, let's uh, see where our resting spot for our strings actually ended up. Our high E looks like a I can see the black line on point zero six zero, so we're going to call that point zero six one or point zero six two. On the low E, I can barely see the black line at point zero six zero. So they're really, really, really close to one another. The high E could come down ever so slightly, but remember, every adjustment you make changes something. So if we bring that down, would it actually change the intonation that much? Probably not. You're only talking like 0.0, you know, zero 0.02, um, but it is close enough 
uh, to start working on this guitar and actually put it through its paces and see how well it holds up. Okay, we're done all of our modifying to the guitar. We had a $250 budget. We didn't want to spend more than what we spent on the guitar itself. The guitar itself was $219 plus $30 shipping, which gave us a $250 budget. So with that budget, we've installed brand new hip shot tuners that are locking. We've put stainless steel saddles on the bridge, stainless steel hardware, a solid brass 37 millimeter block, two different types of Floyd Rose Springs, uh, two black, one red. We've put a pure tone jack on the guitar and a brand new set of strings. Now, since we did all that work, we had to go back and re-shim our saddles. Then we had to intonate our modified bridge. Then we adjusted our string tree to where when you lock the locking nut at the top, it does not change the pitch of the guitar. We also sanded the back of the neck of the guitar and then filled the six holes from the factory tuner and refinished the back of the headstock. This guitar now is ready to take upstairs and plug into an amplifier and see how all of our work works out for us. I already know it's going to be great just setting the intonation down here and getting the action right. The guitar really plays nice. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button. And if you would, subscribe. And comments are always welcome. Would you have done something differently than I did? Let's have a conversation on it. We're, we're a large community. We're all here to learn. Thank you for watching the video and have a great day.